Welcome back friends. Today video session we are going to talk about rate limiter. What is the purpose of rate limiter? Using rate limiter we can configure, we can tell how many times particular API should call for a given time of period. For a given time of period. That is the purpose of rate limiter. Let me open a configuration. See here resilience 4j rate limiter instances default there is a default configuration limit for period limit for period meaning four four times i can call particular api in 10 seconds limit refresh period means in 10 seconds particular api you can call up to four times or more than that more than that mean within 10 seconds we can call maximum four times or more than that or more than that once it reaches the particular 10 seconds you are spring boot application that is resilience 4j api throw the error uh, saying that uh, you're not allowed to call further after completion com after completion of the particular refresh refresh time within that refresh time the particular particular api we can call four times or more than that okay once it reaches 10 seconds 10 seconds our Resilience 4J API throw error. You cannot call this API further. Something like that. Validation will throw. Okay. That is the purpose of rate limiter. Okay. Using rate limit limiter, we can tell that this API, I want to call only this many time for a given time of period. That is the purpose of rate limiter. Okay. Let me open uh, report service. The report service uh, i have uh, written a one uh, api rate limiter api see this is a direct api okay directly we can call from the report services this this method not calling any other services directly we can call from report services okay so um, to test these services we don't have to start other um, other reporting service uh, sorry other micro services like uh, account services product services i started only uh, config service service registry that's it i started only config service and service registry then report service only three services are running okay only three services are running here let in the rate limiter it's a very simple API. What I'm saying is this is a rate limiter demo. This is a rate limiter demo. This is a rate limiter demo. Demo method. This is a response will return in the client side. Now I want to tell this API I want to call. I want to call this API only four times within 10 seconds. Only four times within 10 seconds. 10 seconds. Okay. If 10 seconds reaches um, our Spring Boot application should not allow to call further. I want to throw some error. Okay, for that we can use rate limiter. Here I am using at rate limiter name equal to default. Go back to the configuration. See, resilience 4J rate limiter instances default. Default nothing but this is my configuration, right? This is a default configuration. I am referring this method. Okay whatever uh, default referring this method so this method we can call only four times within 10 seconds okay that is the meaning of this configuration let's say it's working or not to test this scenario i created one more rest application called a rest call it's already uh, used this application for uh, circuit breaker right the last video i used the same application for circuit breaker for rate limiting also i'm using the same application here i i created another endpoint rate limit demo the inside rate limit demo uh, i created a one for loop this for loop iterate up to 30 times each iteration i'm giving one uh, thousand milliseconds after that i'm invoking that particular api where i configured the rate limiter where I configured the rate limiter. This is the API I am calling. This API only I configured the rate limiter. Okay. So our expectation is after fourth, after uh, after fourth call, that is fifth call, or after reaching a 10 seconds, um, our Spring Boot application should not call 
should not call this. It should give a error. Okay, that is our expectation. Let's see it's happening or not. I'm restarting this application. Also, I'll restart this report service. This app is started. What about the report service? The report service still not started. Yeah, report service also started now. Let's check now. Now I'm going to call this API through this rest endpoint. Okay, now I can say localhost API, localhost slash API slash rate limiter. That is HTTP colon localhost. What is the port number? Port number is a 9095. 9095 slash api slash rate limit demo okay if you call this it, if you invoke this uh, endpoint it will try to call 30 times this api our expectation is after fourth it should return an error or if it reaches the 10 seconds it should the it should return a error saying that you should not allow to call further something like that Before that, I will clean that report service log. Okay, hit enter. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now I'm expecting some error. After reaching 10 seconds, it should give error. Yeah. See here, rate limited default does not permit further calls. Either reaches four, four times, or if reaches ten seconds, it never allowed to call particular API. That is a feature of rate limiter. Using rate limiter, we can restrict the number of um, invoking a particular API. Okay, we can restrict. I want to call only this many times for a particular API. Okay, that is the purpose of rate limiter okay then time limiter what is the uh, purpose of time limiter using time limiter right uh, we can tell that i want to execute this particular process particular method within this time period if exceeded at that time if exceed at the time, I want to return time mode exception. If you want to configure such a way, we have to use time limiter. We have to use time limiter. Going back to report services, here I already created one method, time limiter. Whenever you uh, use time limiter, we have to use that method, return type as complete future complete future okay that's the reason i'm using complete future here i'm using add time limiter they may call it default this is a default configuration going back to the configuration now time limiter instance default time duration two seconds i have i mentioned two seconds that meaning this particular method should execute within two seconds if exit more than two seconds i want to throw timeout exception so when you look at inside the implementation i started one thread process i started one thread process that thread process doing some task and my, my expectation is that task should complete in uh, in two seconds otherwise i want to execute i want to return a timeout exception so i'm passing a runnable I am passing a runnable object here. What is that runnable object? Inside this class itself, I have created anonymous inner class. You runnable, runnable, new runnable of. Then I am overriding my run method. Instead of run method, I am passing. I am passing thousand, uh, thousand millisecond. After thousand milliseconds, you should print. It should print right. That meaning uh, within a seconds. Uh, with a, a, in a seconds this method get executed that is this process get executed and complete so my uh, time limiter 
time limited configuration is 2 seconds. So, in this case, it is never written error because this partic particular process execute in a second. In a in a second. That is the reason I am saying that this method execute perfectly without throwing a timeout error. First, we will see that happy flow. To test this scenario, we do not have to uh, use any, any REST application. We can use report service directly. Just I want to call this time limiter. Once I call the time limiter endpoint, it will call this runnable. This method execute um, in a seconds, in a seconds. But my configuration is I want to execute. I want to execute the process within two seconds. So it completes within one seconds, right? So it's execute without any error. That is our expected um, result. Let's see. Time limiter. What is the so if you want to call this endpoint? We need to use this right class time limiter. Okay, let me work. See, hello world, it's done, it's completed. Uh, I got this hello world statement. I got this hello world statement here, right? So process completed within a seconds, uh, but my configuration two seconds. If exit, if, if if the process uh, takes time more than two seconds, that time is throw the timeout exception, right? Now I'm going to say three seconds, uh, three thousand here. Okay. This time it should return error. Now this to execute this process, it will take three seconds. So to execute this particular method will take three seconds, right? But my time limiter I mentioned only two seconds. Within two seconds, this method should execute. Otherwise, it should throw timeout exception. Let me restart the application. I am calling this runnable uh, process, the runnable task using completable future dot run async. Okay. Hmm. Okay. Uh, so we started now. Let me start. Let me invoke the API. Still, it's invoking. Still, still invoking. Time limiter. Oh, server is not started, I guess. Uh, let me, yeah. Now only restart. I will try now. See here. Time limiter recorded a timeout exception. Timeout exception. Okay. So, after changing uh, 3000 milliseconds, this method take three seconds right but my expectation is our configuration is this process should complete within two seconds but that will never happen because I mentioned three seconds so it's giving the time mode exception that is the purpose of um, time limiter that is the purpose of time limiter okay And that's it guys about time limiter under rate limiter in the next class we are going to see bulkhead how to use bulkhead okay until then bye bye from Suresh still not subscribe this channel please subscribe it share this video to your friend circle click bell icon for regular updates thanks for watching this full video